Okay, recording. So, um, we're talking about, uh, okay, wait. And here's the ghost. Hi. We're talking about Hey Ya and both the chord changes and a little bit about the right hand strumming. So, uh, okay. So, um, I think, first of all, I'm going to talk about the chords on the left hand. So, uh, right now you were playing this, like the kind of favorite, uh, you know, beginner G chord, um, yeah. which is three three fingers. You know, first finger, second finger, third finger on the um, on the high E string. Um, and uh, this is a good G chord. But this is a personal preference, but there is some science behind it, so I'm going to share it. Which is that um, this G chord goes um, G B D G B G. Um, and chords have roots and thirds and fifths in them, and so this goes root, third, fifth, root, third, root. Um, and something that, um, like in, uh, it's like a sort of a rule in arranging, in classical arranging, is don't double the third. Um, and the third of the chord is the B, and there's two here. And so I'm telling you why I have this personal preference in an extremely nerdy way. Um, and so the the thing is that thirds on the guitar are out of tune. Like you said, you played the cello earlier, which um, doesn't have frets. Yeah. And so you can play everything in tune on a cello and it sounds great. But you will note that when you're playing guitar, like sometimes you'll have one chord in tune and then another chord won't sound in tune. Um, and in particular, if you listen really, really closely, if you listen really, really closely, you can hear that whoa, 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 whoa. Um, that's because your B string, in order to be able to play on all 12, in all 12 keys on the same instrument, and also to have these frets work out, um, certain intervals, major thirds are tuned a little off. Uh, they're a compromise. And when you play the whole chord, it, and, you, if you, and particularly if you strum it right, um, you can make it sound really, really good. Um, but in general, for strumming, because I, I want to avoid doubling the third, I, I prefer, especially for strumming, unless there's a compelling reason, to use actually all four fingers. Yeah, I've um, done that version. I'm just not very good at I've I've practiced actually quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just have a hard time with it. <laughs> I, I could not play that with the four-fingered. Oh, to, to do it on this song? Yeah, I can't okay. change fast enough. With okay, so I, I, I got something for that too. So I just wanted to give you that kind of nerdy spiel because yeah. well, the other thing that I will say about that is the other way to approach it, the other thing that I like is um, actually somewhat easier. Um, another way to take it, and, and, and this really depends sort of, we're gonna get to the right hand in a minute, but like, um, is how to, how to strum it so that, um, you blend the strings, and this is another. This is another voicing, another chord voicing of the G that I like, which is just two fingers. But I'm I'm doing that thing that you're not supposed to do, which I'm actually muting the A string like that. So it's only five strings, and now I've only got one third again. Or you could use like you can just form the chord and kind of leave that index finger there and have it mute it there. You can just. You're at the top string and the bottom string. You're yep. The second string. So I'm well. So we count from the floor. So this is one, two, three, okay. four, five, six. So I'm muting the fifth string. <laughs> yeah. And two, three, four are open. Yeah, correct. I like that one too, um, because it just blends a little bit better. For your purposes, I mean, I'm not saying you need to change what you're doing for what you're playing right now. I'm just talking about in the future, like in terms awesome. of making choices and 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 thinking about like how um, how we make these choices about voicings. In general, what it is is that major thirds of chords. So any major chord, its third um, is is uh, is out of tune. So because I'm on that subject, I'm going to just do it, which is that on a G chord. Um, it would be that open B string or this B right here at the second fret of the A. And then C, uh, on a C chord, um, oh, on the C chord you have two E's as well, the open E string and then the note at the second fret of the D string. Oh, and if you play it as you are playing it right now with, 
that openings you have potentially three. It's a whole disaster. I'll get to that in a minute. Try to so, use the top one. Hold on. So G C. Uh, okay, wait. I got to go the other direction now. Uh, whatever. A. A has one third at the on the second fret of the B string. That C sharp right there. And D. That top note. And then finally E. The third is on the third string. I'm making a recording so you can, if you want to think about this stuff later, you can. Okay, so. Great. Um, so, so, um, it's those notes that we take great care with. And also it's really about, here comes the ghost. It's, oh, ah, it's like, um, it's about balancing and how we have it the right hand. But I wanted to talk about a little bit about the voicing and, you know, sort of where that comes from and all that. Um, it's hard to get the lighting right so that when I'm talking to you, I look like a normal human being, and then you can actually see the hands when I'm trying to show you stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, major thirds blending. And so I just want to show you a couple of things about the voicings of Hey Ya that you're playing. Um, basically, the G chord and the C chord to get those a little bit more in tune. And then we're going to talk about how to strum this thing to make it sound more better. Okay, so uh, Sherry, we'll go back this way. Okay. Oh, look, there's two hands. I think I only need one right now. That's the wrong one. Okay. And I need more light. Okay. Ha, ha. Okay. So again, I kind of think this is the one, um, especially for strumming. Cause it's, it's, it's now. Yeah. And so now, and the other thing is for C for strumming. I like this C it's actually four fingers. Yep. So one, two, and then third finger is on the low E, and then the fourth finger is on the A. Yep. Yeah. And so with these cowboy chords and sitting the way you are sitting, so right now you've got the neck parallel, almost parallel to the ground. And this is what we call mandolin technique because, uh, oh my gosh, here comes the ghost again. Wait for it. Oh, wait, can I figure this out? Maybe I can. Who knows? Okay. Um, the before the guitar was the most popular instrument in North America and then the world, the mandolin was. Gibson was a mandolin company before it ever made a guitar. And then when Elvis came along, it popularized guitars and a lot of mandolin technique went into folk guitar playing. So when we hold the guitar like this, because when you when you play when you play Spanish guitar, you hold it like this. Yeah. Right. We don't need to do that right now. Well, someday we'll do it for especially talking about finger styles. Good to do. But um, uh, and you know, and sometimes, sometimes playing strumming style, it's there's some interesting things you can learn too. But I'm making the point because a lot of times you'll read all this stuff. You know, you got to keep your thumb behind the neck and whatnot. And it's not necessarily true because with a mandolin, you don't do that. You just cradle the neck between your index and uh, thumb. And so what I'm suggesting is you want to look for like a comfortable position. So. Um, and so for this C, and you can get a lot of advantages, and this is actually going to speak to that F chord you said was giving you some troubles earlier, actually. Um, so I keep hitting the wrong camera. Okay, so yeah. See, when you do that, what I see when I, when I see you trying to make that fourth finger C, right, with all four fingers, and you're trying to put your thumb low, is that you have to look at, if you look at yourself in your self view right now, you're dipping your left shoulder way down right? Like your left shoulder is way lower than your right shoulder, right? Right. You're kind of leaned over like this. Yeah, it was leaning more than right. That. So let me show you, like, if I have to do that, I'm wearing all this black, so you can't really see, but look, actually my whole body's kind of leaned over in order to keep my thumb low like that, right? Whereas if I just bring my thumb up, I can just chill out. Right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, well, that was, that was a question I had because I had some of the things I've read online, they all kind of suggested keeping your thumb behind the neck. When I taught myself like years ago, I did not do that at all. I was like grabbing it like this. So, and, and I, so I kind of consciously tried not to do that this time, but I don't okay. know. Okay, so look, the guitar is a Spanish instrument. It's theirs, right? And like all the old pedagogy or the original pedagogy is Spanish guitar pedagogy and you hold a Spanish guitar like this, right? Wow. And so when you hold a guitar like that, that's how you're going to that's how you're going to grab it, right? That's that's that is ergonomic, right? But um like I said, we don't in in folk music and I consider all pop music's 
a division of folk music. It's gotten more arty over the years, but um, the um, there this is what you see. Like you know, very rarely on MTV Unplugged do you see somebody sitting like this or whatever. Does that even exist anymore? I don't even know. No, um, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think they just have Kardashians or something on there. But yeah. um, but but so and and so fine and and what i'm just trying to say about it is that this comes from mandolin technique and mandolin tradition and and so it's fine you see this stuff in pedagogy about the thumb because people are just going through old guitar books and the old guitar books say lower the thumb but then you're like but jimi hendrix doesn't do that but doc watson's not doing that like I, right and that's because these are informed by uh, mandolin technique and i hate to say it but also banjo technique i have a banjo pre prejudice i have to admit okay. it's not really safe to admit that in virginia but yeah, um, okay anyway um from virginia though, so what's that but i'm not from virginia i you know, i love a well-played banjo at, at a distance okay so um they're loud man they're loud okay on topic I just had dinner and a little caffeine, so it's going good so far. All right, so um, let's see. Uh, let me get that out of the way. Babe, you maybe even more out of the way? Okay, fine. Um, so let's see. Okay, I was talking about voicings of chords. Now, how do I get back there somehow? Hmm. Okay, so I like this C and just go ahead and I'll bring my thumb clear up, you know? It's really about just making sure that you can keep that high E string clear. Yep. Fine. Because, yeah, I mean, it's fine as long as you're not straining, you know, and stressing. And like, you don't want to hike your shoulder up and you don't want to, right, but you look more, a little more comfortable now because you're not sort of leaned over to try to work really hard to get there. Okay, so now let's talk about how to get from G to C. All right, yeah. Okay, so, all right, okay, okay. Now I have to talk about something very uncomfortable because it's a class issue amongst your fingers. So um, uh, you, in, 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 we have five fingers, but this one is always in the background doing the, like the real grunt work, doesn't get much respect. So he doesn't get a number or anything. He's just the thumb, okay? And then we number them one, two, three, and four. And uh, your first finger and your second finger are like the most privileged of your fingers they've been to the academy of eating and brushing your teeth and tying your shoes so they have a lot of skills whereas these are like the underprivileged fingers who like haven't been to any of these places and you know kind of like just hang out together and hope for a job you know so um <clears throat> um we want to give them the education that they've been so sorely needing so we're going to do that okay so what I like to do is when you're working on this transition is follow, just, just, just lead them first. We can, oh, I hate to say this, but handicap. I used to say the dumb fingers. Now I say underprivileged because I think it's more, you know, right. But, right. So just watch this now. So just do like this, right? So literally you can, you can just trace them, their path, right? So on the G, on the C chord, they're going to be on the third and fourth finger, third and fourth. Hello, third and fourth fingers on the C chord, which is where I am, are going to be here on the lowest two strings, sixth and fifth. And now watch this. Just watch. Right. So I'm going to go, I'm going to drag them here and then I'm going to drag them there. I'm not even going to look. Right. Right. And then I'm going to drag them back because now you will learn like exactly how far is it. Right. It's kind of like when you're staying in a hotel room or somebody else's house that you don't know and you have to get up in the middle of the night, right? Well, you kind of feel your way, right? right? Don't look, just drag them. So you drag them one string over, one string over, one string over, one string over. Right? Oh, we're giving them an education about where the strings are, right? right? And so then, because generally what folks do when they make chords is they'll go one, two, three, four. And so these folks only ever get oriented in 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 relation to these folks so what i'm doing is suggesting oh hey let's give these folks their own education and so then orient one and two to three and four 
it's really three and four that have the most challenges because they haven't had an education any job experience you know it's always that whole thing of like you know how do you get a job if you don't have any experience how do you get experience you never had a job so we're giving them a job and we're just training oh this is on the job training or pre pre job training i don't know anyway an internship yes it's an internship yes i like it and I have sad news to tell people about the music business. It never gets paid, but whatever. Okay, so, um, no, that's not true. Okay, and then just orient the other fingers to that. And if you do that, and the beautiful part of this, and I always tell people this, is that the beautiful part of this practice, just dragging these fingers over, is you can do this um, while you should otherwise be being quiet. Like if you're watching your partner's favorite show. And <laughs> Um, you know, you just want to practice some guitar, but quietly, you don't have to make a sound at all because all you're doing is dragging your fingers from string to string. And you want to get that tactile sense because, you know, if you're going to be singing, hopefully you're not going to be singing looking at the fretboard, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm getting the hang of this. I'm just figuring out how to do this like lighting change thing. Okay. So, that's something that you can work on going from this G chord to this C chord, and you can do it, you know, just like so. As as you've probably learned about transitions from Justin guitar, it's great. Okay, and so and actually this yeah this song goes G to C. We're talking about hey ya. Uh, It's great because it teaches you four of the five major chords. Okay, so um, this fine we got. You're gonna work on that. Okay, so now we've got another tricky transition because you 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 have to get. There's no pivot. There's no finger that you are pivoting on, right? Right. So what I would actually recommend you do to orient yourself to it is just notice the notice the path of this guy. Right, is your ring finger, right? The third finger is that when you're on the seat. Now, watch, just watch this now, right? So, like, just drag it down to where it's going to go on the D chord and then form the chord around it. Yeah. Right? So, watch this. Just watch. Just watch. Right? So, here I am on my C chord. And then I'm just going to release the pressure. And then I'm just going to start dragging and turning the hand. So, now it's on the D string. Now it's on the G string. Oh, and now it's at its destination. And then I just form one and two around it, right? Because that is a really easy direct path to imagine. And notice what's happening. We're talking about where the thumb is. Watch my thumb. It just moves ever so slightly and watch my whole forearm, right? I'm rotating, I'm rotating, I'm rotating. See that? Rotating back. I'll do it slow to the A string to the D string, to the G string, to the B string. And notice this again, you can you can not look, right? And that's a really great thing to do. Form the C chord around it. Again, I'm focusing on an underprivileged finger. It's an internship for the third finger going from C to D. So, you know, these transitions are actually doing pretty good. and. Eventually, if you've done your individual chord practice, which, you know, you've got your chords together a little bit, we could talk about that a little bit, but um, maybe we will um, when, I, when we get through this whole hey ya spiel. But um, um, if you orient that, that third finger, the first and second fingers, they're smart, they're educated, they'll, they'll, they'll just get there, you know, pretty much. But let's say that for some reason, you know, one of them was really not that great in school. So, um, then then do this right so let's say you're having a problem figuring out the second finger always gets messed up going to the d chord so then do this right so go like okay i'm going to look at what what happens to the second finger so oh on the d chord oh look on the d chord the second finger oh it's still at the second fret on both chords right so go ahead and form your d chord around it and then put the second finger and then what i recommend is your, your first finger will race into first place, but instead of allowing it to do that, make your second, put your second finger down and then put your third finger and then put your first finger. It's just a little bit disorienting yeah. and that in and of itself will help you build some new synapses. Yeah, you go. 
Oh, yeah. Neuroscience. Very jargony. Okay, but it's true. And you just do this. And, like, that's why I'm really pointing out the whole a business of not looking. Because, oh, so I'm like, oh, I'm here. I go one string up. I go another string up. And I go another string up. And I'm there. And you can feel, oh, first string, not wound. Second string, not wound. Third string, wound. Fourth string is wound, right? They have a little windings. These are plain strings and these are wound strings, right? And then you form that chord right And you can do the same thing with the first finger. You can be like, oh, well, as I pivot, right? It takes, the, it goes like this. It's here and then it's there. And then it's here and then it's there. But I feel like it's easier to locate that first finger once you've located the rules of the third and the second fingers, these two. Now, let's just say for sake of argument, you were going back to that heretic uh, three finger C chord like you started with. One thing that you could notice about that transition is that, oh, the second and third fingers, they are in the same, uh, the same uh, shape, right? Configuration. So you could do this little exercise just dragging them back and forth. These are great for just working on chord changes silently while you're watching, I don't know, The Bachelor or something. I don't know. You know. Or you could be catching up on Sports Center or, you know, those Kardashians because there's no um, MTV unplugged. Okay, whatever. I mean, these all have their place. So finally, we get to our D chord and then, oh man, we got to get all the way to E. So here's how you do that. Now we're going to really lean on the first finger's expertise because now finally we have a pivot finger. We're on the D chord and lo and behold, we can just release the D chord and just slide gently back on the first finger. We just go whoop and then we locate the, the uh, second and third fingers around it. But if you're having trouble with it, good things to do include looking at the path of the second finger. Oh, the second finger's there on the E chord. And then it's there on the on the e, D chord, and then it's there on the E chord, and then it's there on the D chord. There, 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 there. See that? It's like, oh, form the D around the second finger, then come up here and form the E around the second finger. Like I said, making new synapses. And finally, the third finger. Oh, it's here. It's the second fret of the D string, and then you drag it down and slide it over, and there it is on the on the D. All right, so E chord, it's there. D chord, it's there. You can just do this with individual chords. You can just be like, okay, make, make, if you're using three fingers in a chord, make it from the third finger. Make it from the third finger and then go into descending fingers. You've probably never done that. You just went one, two, three, one, two, three, one, I've two, tried, three. I mean, in terms of learning like the, the G with the four fingers, I have tried like, okay, because when I was first doing it, I was doing, I would put these two down at the bottom and I would like put the top and obviously that's really yeah. cool. So I started, well, let me put these down first and then try to get the bottom ones. All of that's good. All of that's good. Just rotating your attention from place to place. All of good. Yeah, kind of, and it's, I think that's the same idea. Yep. Like when I, I can't remember what this chord's called, but I was doing this one as well. E minor seventh. E minor seven, yeah. So I was trying to like, I found it basically impossible to like, if I had like this, I could not get these two down and it took me, you know, five minutes of, you know, okay. it's to do that. <laughs> but okay. I, you know. So let's talk about the individual chord thing for a second. So that's a great technique for learning individual chords is, is just actually working on like forming the chord from each finger. And like, it will be more difficult. It is more difficult to like play that, to set the first and second finger. But what I would do is before you put the pressure, just set the fingers and then there's a little adjustment and then, and then so, you know, so you do a little permutation on it. Do from the second finger. Do from the second finger. Oh, see, I can't even do that. Second finger. Yeah. And then do from the third finger. And finally do from the fourth finger. And like I said, it's just about getting your brain to attach to it different ways. It really, really helps. And it helps you better image the chord, hopefully. And I'll say it one more time uh, because it's worth saying hopefully without looking it's a really good thing to do the more you can because you said you wanted to sing um and this will really help you move towards that goal and also get to the point where you can move these chord changes freely i think i want to talk about a little bit about the right hand 
And then if we have time, I'm also going to talk about coordinating the two hands with hey ya. Okay. So let's see. Oh, the right hand. Where is that? Oh, yeah, it's over here. Okay. So like that. I'm going to need a little more light. Hmm. Okay. So um, need just a little more perspective. Let's see. Caffeine. Okay, fine. So, um, so we were talking about thirds in tune, in tune, and I was talking about blending. And right now, um, so you're. This is kind of how you're strumming. I think it's something like, like you've got the motion right, but we need a little more je ne sais quoi. Except now I'm going to say quoi, um, which is that. Uh, what I what I love to recommend to people is just take the pick. Now I'm gonna get closer. Take the pick, and um, just watch this now. So allow it on the down strum. Watch this. Just allow your your arm to sort of give in to the strum like that, so that the resistance of the string you just give in to it a little bit. Take the pick right this like this and see this. I'm gonna just watch this. So whoa sorry the earthquake um is see that is that like the pick is going to give in like that so it can more easily slide are you like holding it loosely in your fingers or are you no i am not like how are you so i'm holding the pick oh man great topic so this is how to hold the pick hey you know what how to hold the guitar is not the only thing the mandolin guys gave us it's also how to hold the pick so you know, lots of people do lots of different things and some very famous people like Eddie Van Halen held the pick like this and you can do other things, but the standard is this is that yeah. what I often tell people if you're here in my life is I'll say oh hey let's thumb wrestle and like then you put the pick on the side of the finger like that. Yeah, I think I'm doing that. Right. Yeah, you're you're basically doing that. And the nice thing about what I'm showing you right now is that you don't have to loosen up on the pick. And, and basically, the other thing I want to show you is that when I'm strumming, I might hold the pick more kind of with the open finger like that, like it's more open. And then I'll just, if I want to play something individual notes and play fast, I'll actually tighten up the grip like that and bring it in closer to the wrist. Why? Is that? Why? Yeah um because this is like if i'm playing lead guitar stuff because um uh basically because it pulls the tip of the pick in closer to the axis of around of the action so when you move it when you move the pick in certain ways the tip of the pick moves in closer relation to the move that you're making okay uh, this is kind of nerdy and we, we don't anyway so oh. Yeah, I mean, it's just about it. And it's also about efficiency. I can just move it, move it faster. Okay. Right? Because if it's way out here, like it's wagging, like if I move this little tiny motion, it's moving a big motion. But if I move it in tighter and I want to make a small, it's basically for, I make it smaller to make smaller motions. Right. Okay. So, okay. So, but back to this, we want to give in to the resistance of the string. And then on the same thing on the way up, give into the resistance. And so what I recommend people do is, oh, another thing that you can do while watching the Kardashians is just do this and just feel what happens. Feel what happens to your arm. Look at look at my forearm, right? It's like it's just it's rotating. Now, I'm exaggerating it to show this to you. It'll just do a little bit of that, right? But I'm dipping the hand that way on the way down, and then on the way up, I'm I'm gonna rotate the other way. This is called when you put your hand palm up. It's called supination, like hey, more soup. And then this is called pronation when you put your palm down when you rotate that way. So supination, pronation. And so on the way down, you're gonna supinate a little bit, and then on the way up, you're gonna pronate a little bit. And probably if you're really giving in you're going to allow the the wrist to deviate a little bit too. See that? I'm like allowing this little bit. I'm it's just really about giving in to the resistance of the string. So you just hold that pit finger under there and just like that. Like that. And what we're trying to get is 
so that we can get a more dynamic sound. If I want to play louder, what's that? What does more dynamic mean? Louder, loud and soft. If I talk like this the whole time, you will get really, really bored, right? But if I talk like this, like a human, and some words and some syllables are louder than others because yeah. some words are more important, right? So, for example, now I'm going to emphasize the first beat, so the first down strum, right? And it goes like this. Still a little rattly. I'm hitting it too hard. Caffeine. But that's not exactly what we want. What we actually want is to accent the two and the four just a little bit. It's going to sound right. So we're going to go one and yeah but try to make it so it's just tr just make right there's a lot more juice kind of in the lower end of the dynamic range so the quieter range on the guitar than there actually is on the high, on the louder range and i am totally guilty of this too i it's, I'm sad to say that I'm I pummel the guitar I really do but um but um I'm just like want to adjust the lighting but anyway the um but there's you can get such great sound just give you a little more a little more sound right so I'm going one What I'm doing is that on two and four, I'm giving in a little bit less. I'm probably pushing a little slightly bit faster, but. Now just listen to that. And then I'm gonna go back to something which is more even, less dynamics, sort of like not giving in. Right, it sounds terrible just sounds like a beginner and a, a, a really great thing to do is just work on this just giving in this way so you get the feeling of this oh relax 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 okay relax this way and now let me give you like kind of a wider angle on that whole thing i'll try hey i did it so like and one thing that I find helps, I tell a lot of people is like, dr like drive from here and kind of like, I just kind of let the, 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 the hand sort of flop around. Like if you raise, if you, if you just let your, you know, your wrist, you know, your, your wrist kind of be relaxed and you just grab your forearm and go like this. Oh, look what happens to the, the hand. It goes like that. Right. But then if you're up here, it kind of whips up at the end. And then as you change the momentum, and then if there's this resistance, it's going to turn like that. And so you come this way and it looks a little bit like that. I'm very much exaggerating. And then you come up and then it, it kind of follows that momentum. Like if I make it really big and then you, but you come down and it, it resistance and then resistance. So it's pretty loose. You were talking about holding the pick loose. I'm not holding the pick loose. What I am is letting the wrist be relaxed, okay. right? And if you just go like this, you know, wee, right? Like just that motion of this, you know, and then just make it bigger. Just kind of shake it. Oh, shake it like a Polaroid picture. Hey, yeah, right? <laughs> right? Literally, right? You're barely old enough to know what a Polaroid is, I think. I don't know. Anyway, so. Notice when I do that up strum before the before the open down strum, you'll really see it. And it's so fast that it's hard to see, which is why I slow it down. But it's kind of like it's just you want to feel that, like I said, the looseness in the wrist rather than in the way you hold the pick. And this by by doing so, you'll drop the pick less, you know. Yeah. So, will you play that again right right now where you're just playing? Um, okay. Just play it, just play. Yeah. I was just trying to play all the different things. Like, so. Okay, stop. You said it, you said it, so I don't have to say it. You said, I was just trying to put all the different things in. 
right? Okay, yeah. so um, divide and conquer, that's the way to do it, right? So like, and, and like play the song, like have fun, we're here to play music, so do that, right? And then, okay, so it's the COVID era and you're working from home. So um, what I encourage people to do, this is hands down the most productive way to practice is, um, uh, instead of taking work breaks to, you know, see what the Kardashians are up to on social media, um, take work Did breaks. You the Kardashian, like I, just a theme, you know, I'm just riffing tonight, you know, and I keep saying it wrong, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a musician on that show, right? Kanye's on that show, right? I've never seen it. If they work, if they break up? I have no, I think there's something going on about that. I literally, I've never seen it. I, anyway, um, uh, yeah uh anyway um so so but it worked five minute work breaks like on the hour like because everybody takes a minute to stop what doing what it is they're doing because if you were just oh you said you're in tech so like you're doing this tech stuff and you're you know you're working on a problem this is the perfect time right so you're working on this problem and it's you know it's vexing you like you, you can't get this bug out of this code and like you're getting nowhere and so the only thing to do is get up from the from the from the terminal so um is that a pun anyway terminal anyway whatever so um caffeine so you get up from your computer and you pick up your guitar and you set a timer and this is the most important part i love having a hardware timer but in general this is the convenient timer and you set a timer for five minutes or less if you have less but five minutes is a perfectly good interval people think you can't get anything done in five minutes and it's not true um and so you set a timer for five minutes and uh and you work on one thing maybe two so you work on the transition from g to c Right. And you work on those things we talked about, the movement from the, 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 the of the third and the fourth fingers and then you and, and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And the reason you set the timer is um, not so that you will practice for five minutes. It's so that you can let go that part of your brain that's like, oh, man, I got to get back to work. Yeah. Right. And so that you can fully focus and get into what you're doing. And what's amazing, you'll find out that you'll really be able to focus and then your timer will go off and you'll be like, man, I don't really want to go back to work, but I am getting paid for this. So I'm going to, and, and that's the important thing too, is to discipline yourself to do that. Um, because you know, if you don't, if you lose your job, it's going to be hard to keep practicing. So, um, so, and then you do that. And then the beautiful thing is in the background, Oh, you're, a, you're a tech guy. That program runs, you've booted the program and it's running, right? And then lo and behold, and, and what you may find is you'll get back to work and you'll be like, oh, I figured out that bug. It's weird how it works, but it totally, it can work. Or at least you'll have a fresh, you know, you'll have a fresh mindset. You won't be like there, you know, you won't be crouched about it. So, and then another beautiful 55 minutes roll by, you could set a timer for that and you say, oh, hey, I get my break. And so you take another five minutes and then you work on another kind of tr transition, or you just work on that giving in, giving in, giving in thing. And then, you know, you know, another hour goes by, work on another skill, work on a different skill, you know, maybe play a song, but divide and conquer. And these five minute practice sessions, the, the, we know from the neuroscience now that, especially when you're learning a new skill that to build these new skills, you know, if you, if these sessions are a day apart or even more than, I don't know how many hours apart, like it's harder to build them. But if you build those sessions, shorter sessions closer together, you'll, it'll build faster. So it's a really great way to build muscle memory. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because I was curious about that, because like I've been trying to do, I've been wondering what like the optimal way to spend, I only have, I have X amount of time. Yeah. Like, spend on stuff and like, I didn't know if it was better to, I didn't know if those like short things were actually worth it. So I guess- Totally, they're great. They're the best. And well, then really, like, I have like, an, like a half an hour, an hour of focus, like and focus the whole time. Um, well, can you, that's the real question. It's like, if you're sitting there for half, half an hour is about my limit, my mental limit. Typically. Well, and the thing is, if you're sitting there for a half an hour, like dividing that half an hour up into chunks and focusing on different goals, because really the thing is, what are you practicing? What are you trying to get better? Right, because just sitting there playing the song over and over, eventually it will get better. Right, 
but if you're if you have a focused goal and you're saying i want to work on this transition right so oh hey let me just do it as dan was showing me like sort of dragging those fingers over and like and focusing on each finger right and then let me do it oh okay you know just put it put it in time a little bit or just ready set go 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 like we talked about a few skills tonight but there's other ways to practice these things we talked about um and so if you're working on that if you've got a half an hour i would still use a five minute timer you know because there's all these you know there's different songs you want to do and all these kinds of things it's not like you don't have to and and the goal timer or not the goal is flow the goal is to be totally focused on what you're doing and sometimes it's just more it feels more relaxed and better to like no timer whatever and just kind of flow with it but you can the trick is noticing when you're not paying attention when you're not really focused and when you're sort of drifting off and when you're not being productive and the timer can be good for that because it'll buzz and you'll be like and you know use one that has a pleasant sound I use the drum fill that opens up Jamie's crying by Van Halen because it's just -dum -bum -bum. you know doesn't interrupt me but just lets me know it's time to move on um and it's really you know it's really it can really help your productivity I think okay Let's see what else are we gonna do tonight? We got a couple, couple two tree minutes something. Anyway, what is it? Get there, and I feel like I'm. Show me that. Show me your F chord. Okay, okay, hold on. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so oh F chord. So again, but, we were talking. So hmm? hard that it's like I couldn't imagine doing this for. Yeah. Know. All right. So here's, 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 you know, earlier we were talking about guitar, right? Don't do it. Yet. Don't do it. But, um, so, uh, by the way, I'm playing capo of the first fret because my guitar is tuned to half step flat. I think we talked about that earlier. Okay. So the mandolins only have four courses of strings. The necks are much narrower. You don't have to reach all the way across four and five strings on a mandolin. So um, consequently, even the bar chords on, and there are, there's not, a, I mean, you can play a lot of things as a bar chord. I don't know much about mandolin playing, I'll be honest. But, uh, but the, my point is that this technique comes from the classic, the Spanish guitar. And the, what you, what you can do with classic guitar is you can hang the weight of your elbow of your arm to actually push the string down, right? So um, let me show you this a little bit closer. Well, I guess probably, yeah, that's, hold on. What the, what the, what, what? Okay, and then, oi, oh, the ghost. I did it wrong. Okay, fine. Okay, see, now you can see. So um, if you can see, oh, hold on. Let me show you my ghostly arm. So here we go. And I've actually got the weight that I can use of my arm like that. And because I'm I'm doing this bar across the strings, right? It's actually more comfortable, right? I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna, well, okay, you did it. Um, okay, so this is very difficult to show on camera, but let me try. Um, the thing, uh, I'll, t I'll tell you this, the, the thing I don't really like about classical guitar technique is how you sit, because um, I find it just difficult on my back and on my life and whatever. So, um, so, but, uh, and this is a very um, non standard way of doing this. Uh, in classical guitar, you actually have a, a, a piece of equipment to do this. But now you can see my feet. How do I do that? Um, I, I actually put my right foot down on its side so that my right knee is out to the side a little bit and down, right? This is gets lowered down and I'm sitting forward on my chair. So only my bottom is on my chair. And then I put my left foot on the sole of my right shoe. So if you got nice shoes on, you might want to make other choices. Typically what is done in classical guitar, and I, I would, if I had more time, I would just go get it. But is you have a little stool to put your foot on yeah i've seen it i've seen that 
you can use, you know, perhaps a, 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 an old uh, computer engineering textbook or several of them, or like a yoga block is pretty good because it's like has different heights and stuff. So you can play with that. Um, if you don't really have a guitar um, uh, uh, footstool currently. Um, but my favorite thing to do to get this position, see, because what we're trying to do is get this position where uh, we've been discussing where the guitar is like so. Okay. And, but my favorite thing to do is, um, and they say, you know, it's good for you. It's just stand up and use a guitar strap, um, to get it right. Or to get it comfortable. If your guitar doesn't already have one, you probably want a strap button on the neck. I don't have one. on the neck. Yeah. So, um, if you go to, um, are you in Falls church? Arlington. Okay. Um, yeah, so a place you, as I thought about getting Right. Either my guitar, a new guitar, or it's set up or something. Because I'm not, I set call, up, I set it up myself like ten years ago, and I didn't really know what I was call, doing. Call um, uh, uh, action music in Falls Church and action uh, music. At, yep, and tell them you'd like a strap button put on put on the heel of your on the neck of your guitar, and uh, ask if they can do it while you wait, and they will. That's like I don't know. I don't know what they charge for that, but it's not much. Um, and you can have them look at the setup. The setup is a different, a whole different deal. But um, I like it because it, it helps this instrument balance a little bit more, and you can play around with this whole thing. Um, I don't want to delve into that too deep, too deep tonight, because I want to show you something that's more like how you're sitting. Because mostly, let's face it, you're going to sit and practice guitar on the couch, right? Okay. If you're sitting here mandolin style with this you can just um you can just do like so so instead of doing this and then we were talking about that shoulder dipping thing where you have to lean over and it's really kind of uncomfortable and whatever instead of doing that um oh look i'm gonna do the thumb wrap oh it's bad it's it's you know it's terrible it's bad technique well you know it's not spanish classical guitar but you can do it and you can either just mute the low e string right just mute it or you can actually fret it with the thumb which may take some doing um but again so in order to get to this just hang your hang your arm from the thumb just hang your hand there just like hang like that yeah exactly right and then now let's just form the f chord oh hey let's do that thing earlier third finger fourth finger second finger so no matter what kind of f chord you're doing you're going to do that well you might do some with the open a string but let's just leave that out of the out of the plan for now so so now you might do that and then you've got some options with the first finger it's easier probably to start with to just play the b string with the first finger and then you just gently if you sort of flat finger the first finger you can actually mute the first string a little bit so i'm just actually using the flesh of the finger and you get a nice you get a nice sounding f chord you can even do it with just the muted and if you're just blending chords fine right or you can work on doing a partial bar where you actually press the finger down flat and maybe it touches the third or even fourth string decide depending on the size of your hands And then you have to work on exactly, just exactly how far your hand is rotated so that you don't mute the first string and you, and you can get the thumb. But why I'm pointing this out is because this technique with the thumb wrapped makes more sense for mandolin technique. It's always about the right technique for the job. Oh, and you might actually do this. You might actually tip the neck down. You might actually tip it's harder to do this if the neck is pitched back towards you but if you pull if you allow the neck out in front of yourself a little bit right it's more comfortable right as it happens it turns out i know this is strange but it turns out that human beings are not um they're not straight lines they're just not so um uh we have to kind of adapt to um the instrument this this uh, guitar string under tension is the straightest line you're going to see in your life so the you'll see like oh hey look that's a lot more comfortable than me trying to do this with this right. listen to your body okay there you go 
So while you're while you're working on the F chord to get this, if, if you have a guitar strip now that attaches up here, go ahead and play around with that and, and try your F bar chord like this or try sitting how I was showing you in various versions of that. You can look up, you know, classical guitar posture, but essentially it was how I showed you, um, you know, putting the left foot up and getting the right knee out of the way. Okay. That was kind of a good survey course for a Monday night on some uh, beginner guitar techniques, hopefully pushing you forth in your uh, uh, your rendition of Hey On. I will look forward to one day hearing you sing that as well, because it's an awesome song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, just remember this. This is what I like to say to everybody, and it's very important. Somebody told me this a long time. If you're on time and you're in tune, you're okay. That's it. That's the whole game. So we're just refining that in lots of different ways.